So I was going to do a video on uh, Jihadi Julian this morning, but I'm going to have to postpone it because there's other stuff on my mind right now. And what's on my mind is um, something very interesting that is emerging. Remember back in late February, there was that whole firefight in uh, Zaporozhye around the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. And it, it was very confusing what was going on there. Mm -hmm. It was very confusing because there seemed to be some sort of uh, um, uh, rocket propelled grenade team that was assaulting it, a Ukrainian a rocket pr propelled grenade team that went in there and it was confusing and whatnot. And well, you know, the, the war trundled along and so people sort of like forgot about it, right? And well, something came up that I just became aware of it and I've been looking into it and it's really interesting. And this is the story. You see, there is this uh, gentleman, uh, Rafael Mariano Grossi, a uh, good Argentine, uh, seems a very capable man. He is the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. And uh, from what I've been reading and gathering, the um, International Atomic Energy Agency has been going out of its way to build bridges with both the Russians and the Ukrainians. Because in Ukraine, well, a lot of uh, Ukraine's electricity is generated by nuclear energy. And Zaporozhye, the Zaporozhye power plant, which right now is under the control of the Russian armed forces, well, um, the Zaporozhye plant is the largest <laughs> nuclear, nuclear power plant in all of Europe. I did not know that. And so, uh, you know, it has six reactors. It's a big deal. And so, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Grossi here is, of course, extremely worried about, uh, you know, a nuclear accident, either, either deliberate or by accident or whatever. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a potential problem. This is actually, if you think about it, the first time that there has been a ground war uh, with a nuclear installations on the ground, a, a major ground war. I mean, think of any other time. I mean, any other nuclear power, nuclear power in the sense of having nuclear reactors on its territory. There aren't that many of those. And up until this point, this is the first time that we've had to deal with a war going on in the territory where there's a nuclear power plant. And so Mr. Grossi is extremely nervous, as he should be. You know, I mean, apparently he seems to be doing his job and good on him. But at the World Economic Forum, just about two weeks ago, something that I didn't notice and nobody in the mainstream media brought up, it was the alt media and some fringe sites that brought it up, and some fringe sites, you know, you're always a little skeptical about them because, you know, sometimes they bring up something and, and you start looking into it and it's like sort of like bullshit or they're like, you know, you know, gilding the lily or whatnot. But not in this case. I'm not going to mention which, which alt site, um, more fringe than alt, but they were on the money. And this is something that the mainstream media didn't report. You'll have to decide why. And the story is very simple. At the World Economic Forum... Uh, uh, Rafael Grossi was on a panel and he was discussing the situation of, uh, well, precisely this, you know, nuclear energy and war. And he threw out some figures about the enriched plutonium that was at the Zaporozhye power plant. Now, the figures that he threw out inevitably lead to the conclusion that it's enough enriched material to create nuclear weapons. That is that the, the Zelensky regime, the, the Kiev regime, had at, at the war, at the start of this war, enough fissionable material for a nuclear weapon. Now, as you know, of course, the issue insofar as nuclear weapons is concerned is not the bomb. Making the bomb is relatively easy. It's getting the material, the plutonium, the, the plutonium or the enriched uranium. That's the tricky part. And Mr. Grossi, one wonders if he did so on purpose or accidentally. You'd have to ask him. But he revealed that the Kiev regime had enough plutonium and enriched uranium at Zaporozhye to build nuclear weapons. The fact that uh, Ukraine has nuclear power plants means that essentially they have the technology to build a nuclear weapon. And they were stockpiling fissionable material. You see where I'm going here. 
when in Munich, just before the war started, Zelensky started talking about how Ukraine ought to have nuclear weapons. And none of the other leaders said anything. Well, he was basically saying, you know, we've got what it takes to make the nuclear weapons. We should make them, right? It wasn't that he was going to Munich to ask them to give him nuclear weapons. He was saying, basically, we should build nuclear weapons with the stuff we've got, shouldn't we? Now, look, regardless of what you think of the... Uh, um, well, let me let me phrase this again. Let me turn it around in a different direction. You see, from these clues, you or I at least come to the conclusion that Ukraine was threatening to build nuclear weapons, and they were going to have nuclear weapons right on Russia's doorstep. Had I been the leader of Russia, I would have, on realizing this and realizing, you know, they've got the fissionable material at the Zaporozhye power plant. And they're telling the West that they want to make nuclear weapons and nobody in the West is giving them any pushback. Ergo, 2 plus 2 means they're going to make nuclear weapons and start using them to threaten us. And so therefore, I got to beat them to the punch. That's what I would have thought had I been the leader of Russia. And I think anybody responsible would pretty much come to the same conclusion. Now, does this make me a Putin bot, a Putin shield, a Russian agent? I don't know. But if I were in the shoes of any country that is bordering a corrupt kleptocracy like Ukraine, because it is, okay, I live here and I love the people. I love the country. It's beautiful. The people are lovely. They're so warm and thoughtful, but it's a kleptocracy. It's, it's corrupt. It's... It's, it's, it's like an African dictatorship, practically, you know? I mean, that level of corruption, it's just ridiculous. But they have nuclear weapons, man. <laughs> the African states don't have nuclear weapons. But Ukraine had the fissionable material. Now, the fact is that when Rossi said this, either said it out loud because he wanted to put out a signal or let it slip by accident, who knows, ask him. But as soon as he said this, oh, man, the Kiev regime just th jumped on him. They jumped on him. Go look through the, uh, the thing. You know, Google, uh, um, Grossi, Davos, um, International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, you, you'll find all sorts of stuff. Reuters. And they were furious. I mean, they were really, the Ukrainians were absolutely furious. Because it gives credence to the justification for the war. It's basically saying that Grossi, Either he meant it or not, I don't know, but he basically gave another very, very good reason for the Russians to have staged this invasion. And I just wanted to put it out there because I think it's something to consider. Because so far, this is what we have. We have that there were these bioweapons labs, okay? Now, how close were they to actually having material that could do anything to the Russians or whatever? We don't know, but we do know from documents that the Russian Ministry of Defense has released and that seem to be authentic, that the, the Ukrainian laboratories had deliberately and specifically gone looking for uh, genetic material of ethnic Russians to create biological weapons that would infect them worse. Okay, that's, that's one fact, okay? But the bio, bio labs existed, exist. I mean, Victoria Newland confirmed their existence in congressional testimony when she was talking to Marco Rubio in the Senate, okay? So they exist, number one. Number two, we know for a fact that the Kiev Authority was getting ready to invade the Donbass. That's why they had over 100,000 combat troops in eastern Ukraine, the plus 100,000 combat troops that are getting chewed up alive right now by the Russian armed forces. Why do you think they're there? They're there because they were about to launch a blitzkrieg attack on Lugansk and Donetsk and potentially Russia itself, and the Russians just beat them to the punch. See? We know that. And now we have this fact confirmed by Grossi, inadvertently or not, that the Kiev Authority had enough fissionable material to make a number of nuclear weapons with which it could potentially threaten Russia threatened the destruction of Russian cities. 
I'm just putting it out there. I'm also adding it because I think it's a very good, uh, um, what you call it, uh, um, it gives another clue to that whole Zaporozhye thing in late February. I mean, because that whole thing was really, you know, weird. The Russians came in, captured it, but the Ukrainians threw in a, a, a squad. What was going on? What was the plan? Huh? Because at, at the time, I thought that their plan was to draw Russian fire and score a PR win. Because, you know, the Russian, the, the Ukrainians, rather, were all about PR and the information war, right? But then... Now, with this information, maybe it's something else. By the way, in the description below, I'm posting a link to the video where you can find Mr. Grossi making this admission and when he was talking to the World Economic Forum. Hang on a second. I'll tell you exactly. Um, you got to go to the minute. I think it's the minute 440. Well, in the description, I'll say exactly what minute you got to go to, what, where, where on the timeline you got to go to, to get all of Grossi's statement. Remember, it's not that he stops everything and says, this is what the Ukrainians were doing. No, he inadvertently reveals the amount of fissionable material that was at Zaporozhye. That information is crucial. That information of how many tons of plutonium and uranium were there, that's the key issue. Because it's not spent fuel rods. It's refined material. And that's why it matters. I personally think that Grossi might be pretending that it slipped out by accident. Oop, boo-boo me. But I think that he probably did it deliberately. A guy like that, you just look at him, he's smooth as silk. That guy, no, he doesn't say anything unless he's thought it six ways to Sunday. Okay, So I think that he deliberately let slip out how much actual fissionable material was there at Zaporozhye. So as to signal, this is what's going on. This is what was really happening at Zaporozhye. Another clue in this puzzle that is Ukraine. 